This is, is that on your property? That is on our property. The property goes way back. This is the crazy thing we're doing. We're live streaming 24 hours a day. Oh boy. I brought out some of my collection for you. The entire set is autographed. Every single card. The value's gone down for sure since I bought it over the summer, you know. I was terrified. Like all the work that I've done for the last year to, oh dear God, if you were to take every single card out of all of the showcases, it would be a row, a continuous row of 14 football fields worth of cards. That is impressive. So we're here in Atlanta, Georgia this morning. Uh, we got in late last night and we're bumping around traffic this morning. But we have, uh, we have a few hours to kill today. So I, I gave a call to a good friend who's opening a massive card shop here in Atlanta. And uh, I asked him for a few minutes. We're gonna swing by and see him and I think it's gonna be a treat. You'll know exactly who it is when we walk in. Let's go swing by and see what's up. Hey Ty, yeah. welcome to Atlanta, That's man. Cool. It's great to see you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming by. Yeah, man. Come thanks on in, come on us. in. Oh boy. I brought out some of my collection for you. I know you wanted to see a bit of the collection. Okay, so I walk into the kitchen and I see these five Pelican cases and I'm thinking, okay, what does he have hiding in these things? We'll go over this in a minute. You want a coffee first? That'd be awesome, yeah. Let me get you a coffee. It. Is that Florida Gator cup for me, that mug? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna give that to you. I'm gonna <laughs> give this to you, Ty. Here you go. There's your Florida Gator mug. That's my official welcoming so gift to you. So let me hang the Mizzou I, hat over. I know you're a Mizzou guy. <laughs> We play in a few weeks. I know. So we should have timed this better. Cheers. So Good to see you. Game. There you go. Yeah. So how long have you been in Atlanta then? I mean, because... I moved up from Florida. I grew up in Florida, lived in Florida my whole life, hence the Gators. Yeah. Uh, I moved up to Atlanta about eight or nine years ago, and uh, I love it up here. Atlanta's a great city. Well, I mean, from a sports perspective, it has to be insane. Right? It is awesome having all of the major sports. You've got, I mean, the obviously the Braves are fantastic. And so we've got beautiful brand new stadiums. Um, and you know what, the teams, I mean, the Braves are great. I feel like the Falcons are, are on the rise. Yes, yeah, we'll they're see. scratching, they're scratching. I'm optimistic. Yeah. Um, and the Hawks, you know, I don't know. They're exciting. I don't know if they're great, but they're yeah. exciting. So it's, it's, it's pretty good sports. I'm yeah. happy with it. You got Trey Young, it's hard to complain. Trey about Young that. is fun. Are you working from the home every day? Or are you going to the office? How's We've got a studio. Do? It's a Friday today. Yeah. And uh, we let everybody work from home on Fridays, so. It's a quiet day in the studio today, so I'm just chilling out. It's quiet here. My kids are at school. My wife's off doing work today, so um, just just me and my collection today. So your boys are they're heavy into collecting. Big they time. A, they have a cool channel. My boys watch it. Yeah, Card Kids. Yeah, they yeah. love it. Hello and welcome to another video of Card Kids. Uh, today I'm here at the Burbank Card Show, and we're gonna give away some packs. Let's yeah! do this. Yeah! yeah, my older son Reeves, he's 12. My younger son Harrison yeah. uh, is eight, and they both they're they both love collecting. Did they love collecting before you went in the hobby? Was it uh, yeah. Were together? No, they actually got me back into it. What? That's actually how I got back into it, was oh, actually cool. through Reeves, my older son. So he got really into Pokemon, like a lot of kids do, when he turned probably five or six. He got super into Pokemon. And then when he was seven or eight, he went down to Florida to stay with my mom, his grandmother, and she said to him, she's like, you know, when your dad was a kid, he was really into sports cards. Mm -hmm. And they were at Target, and so she bought him a blaster of football cards. And, yeah. and he brought it back to Atlanta. He's like, Dad, we should open this. You know, your mom said, you know, my grandma said that, we're, that you were into this as a kid. I hadn't seen cards in 30 years. I was like, I was into this as a kid. I was crazy about this as a kid. This was 2018. And, um, so we opened up the blaster together. And I'm like, oh, these, and he pulls out like a serial numbered card. And I'm like, wait, why is this card numbered? Like what? And then, you know, I'm like, why is this card shiny? Why does this <laughs> card refract light? But then this one doesn't like, it's the same. I don't get that. What is going on here? Then why is this card have a red border? And it's the same card as this one, but that one doesn't yeah. have a red border. So then I immediately started like going online researching it, I actually found your podcast was one of the very oh, first nice. things I found, Breaker Culture. Yeah. That was one of the very first things I found. And I started listening to your podcast and I started, uh, you know, just reading articles and blowout forums and all this stuff online and just learning about it. And mm -hmm. I just, the more and more I learned about it, the more I got drawn in. So before I know it, I'm on, you know, Steel City's website and Blowout Cards website, ordering boxes to the house and ripping boxes, and, yeah. you know, and I just totally got hooked. So at that point, was it 
you wanted to collect or mm -hmm. was it you're seeing it from a business perspective because yeah. you're a business dude you've been yeah. around you got all kinds of irons in the fire what what gravit would you gravitate towards it was both but i couldn't i the business side of it i was like oh my gosh there were so many things different this time around as an adult seeing it mm -hmm. than as a kid and when i saw things like grading which didn't exist you know 30 years ago when i was doing it as a kid online marketplaces like eBay and how often the fact that there's actual real liquidity, you could actually sell your cards, which was, yeah. you couldn't really 30 no. years ago. That was always kind of a misnomer. Yeah. But now you can actually do it, right? And I was like, wow. And then I saw the serial numbering of the cards and the designs of the cards and the stratification of different sets from low end to high end. And then online breaking, so you could buy into a really high end box, but only pay a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. And I saw all of these things and I'm like, oh my, gosh, this is so much better today than it was when I was a kid. And I started right then, I started telling all of my friends, this is gonna become huge again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is going to blow up. This is got all of the elements of something that is going to become really big again when more people like me rediscover it through their kids yep. who are getting up to the age. That's And that was my prediction. And so I remember late 2018, early 2019, I started telling all of my friends about this and they almost all thought I was crazy. They're all like, wait, you know, baseball cards are gonna become big again? Like a lot, they didn't really understand. And then it was, uh, I think it was April of 2019 that Gary V went on the Rich Eisen show. Mm. And that was the first time where he publicly spoke about cards. Sports cards, I'm gonna say it here now on a national stage, I believe that the culture of sneaker flipping is gonna bleed into sports cards because these kids can't get enough inventory with sneakers. I have a few friends of mine who you know, follow all the Gary Vee stuff. So they all heard the episode and they're like, oh my God, Gary Vee just said Confirm everything said. that we've been hearing Jeff say. Yeah. So all of a sudden they believed it. All of a sudden they're like, oh, well maybe Jeff's not crazy because now Gary Vee's talking about it. And so they texted me the link to the episode. And that night I came home from work and I said to my wife, Kim, I said, okay, I gotta launch a business into this space. I've started 15 different businesses uh, over the last uh, 25 years. So she yeah. knows, like, this is me. I get into something, I get obsessed with something, I get crazy about it, and then, you know, oftentimes I wanna do a business or, you know. And so she knows this is the pattern, and she is very supportive of it. The one debate that we had was, what do I do first? So I had mm. two concepts. One concept was market movers, was there needs to be a data product where it can do charts and graphs in real time. You put in a card and it charts out recent sales. And, and you know, that was partially inspired by some of the work you were doing mm. with your prism ladders. 2018, 19, Trey Young, the electric point guard for the Atlanta Hawks, card number 78. There are 1,679 silvers. Mm -hmm. You were the only person back then who was actually putting together data and charts but it was obviously a very manual process and you were manually compiling all of that yeah. and i said how can this happen in a very automated manner mm -hmm. where you're pulling in the data from ebay and you're it's all you know you're able to automatically bring charts up on the fly so i had that idea and then the other thing i said was i said there needs to be really good youtube content around the prices and the price changes of sports cards and investing in sports cards because there was there was zero of that on YouTube. You had the podcast, you were one of the only people talking about cards from that standpoint, but there was almost nothing on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The only thing really on YouTube back then about sports cards were simply some breakers. That's really all it was, pack rips. You know, at first I put out a couple of episodes before the national, nobody watched them. You know, they had, they had you know, they had less than 100 views and the views that they did get were just simply my friends who I had sent the link to. Yeah. No one watched them. And then I went to the National and the National is where I kind of got my big break because I go to the National in 2019, nobody, nobody knows my show or knows who I am. But on the first day of the National, I set up uh, just my iPhone on a little tripod in the corner of the show floor. By the way, not a single person was like, videotaping, vlogging. I mean, today you go there and it's a sea of, yep. of cameras, but in 2019, no one was doing it. So I set up in the corner of the room, my little you know, phone on a tripod, the little microphone, and I just give an update. I'm like, all right, I walked around the show floor of the National today. Yep. Here's what I saw, here's what I heard, here's what's hot, here's what's selling. 
um, and put together. And then at that night, I edited it in my hotel room mm -hmm. and I posted it to YouTube the next morning. And welcome to another episode of Sports Card Investor. And this is a special episode because you are looking live at the 2019 National Sports Collectors Convention in Chicago. And that video got a few thousand views because of the fact that there were a lot of people at home searching for, they, they, they had FOMO, they wanted to know what was going on yeah. the National, they're searching for it. And I was the first thing that popped up because there wasn't much on YouTube about the National. And so that got me a few thousand views, then that got me, you know, a, you know, several hundred subscribers, maybe thousand subscribers from that video. And then that, then that was the but start. Momentum's seven. building. Then yeah. every time I got back from the national, every video I did was starting to get more and more views, more and more subscribers. Yeah. October of that year, when we were approaching, I think like 10,000 subscribers that we hadn't gotten there yet, but we were approaching that. And that's when I said, okay, this is enough momentum and groundswell. Now we need to start building market movers. Jeff wasn't one of those guys grandfathered into the hobby and given an audience. I mean, he's he's told us the story of him going to the national and taking out his phone and recording before any of his platform was built. He grinded it out and built a reputation by just working hard. I can see why he's been successful in other things in life. He just has that it factor that you don't find very often. And then we started to just quickly scale and grow. And we've got about 25 full-time employees now. Um, Crazy. Yeah, about half of them are based here in Atlanta and about the other half are kind of distributed um, different parts of the country, a, a few international employees, uh, software developers. Hey, what's up guys? We are super stoked to release a project we've been working on for the last six months called UncommonReseller.com. For many of you that, that know me, I left the corporate world uh, two years ago to pursue this dream of reselling full time. And it's something that has been game changing for me and my family. And we wanna teach you the things that we've learned throughout the process, things that people have taught us or that we've learned the hard way. An uncommon reseller is focused exclusively on that. We've designed a professional course to help you with the psychology of reselling. We've also put effort into designing an eBay analytics course to help you break down the really advanced things that people get confused by. So go to uncommonreseller.com. Link is in the upper right hand corner or in the show notes below and join us in the community and elevate your reselling game. See you there. I feel like Robin Williams and Hook when I see uh, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bridge. The bridge is fun. The kids the kids love that. Yeah. This is, is that on your property? That is on our property. The property goes way back. It's a nice. it's a really special piece of property. The weather here is wonderful. You get seasons, you get trees changing. It's and so we you're able to do a lot of outside stuff in the fall in Atlanta. Yeah. So it's beautiful being out here and and uh, you know, kids run around on the field and play soccer and you know my wife and I'll have a glass of wine and enjoy the scenery it's nice it's hard to beat that yeah so COVID COVID happened right yeah. after we launched market movers yeah so you know we put all that investment into building out market movers and market movers launches in the middle of February of 2020 and yeah. then 30 days later sports shut down the world shuts down I was terrified because we had just put all of this effort in, in money into market movers and of course, I just built up the Sports Card Investor channel and audience. Yeah. Those first couple of weeks, prices really dropped hard, like 30 mm -hmm. to 40 to 50% the first week or two after COVID hit. And I'm watching all of this and I'm going like all the work that I've done for the last year to, oh dear God, like, you know, we started seeing people cancel from market movers all of a sudden. And the product only been up for a month and all of a sudden we're seeing cancellations. But then beginning of April, 2020, the last dance documentary comes on. Yeah. And, and just the mindset of everybody seems to flip. Like after a couple of weeks, everyone's like, okay, I guess we're gonna be stuck home for a while. We better find something else to do. And for a lot of people that became sports cards. It was a connection for them with sports and with athletes when sports weren't going on. And it was, I think, a connection to their childhood in many cases. Right. It was a connection to their family and to their kids. And it was just entertainment during a period when there there wasn't much. How has the family kind of come around you and kept you motivated in doing this? And honestly, it's so special right now to have two sons who are in that ideal collecting age because they, they are as passionate about it as I was when I was a kid. Hmm. So now I get to re-experience re -experience it through their eyes. And not only do I get to see that and the excitement that they have for cards and the love that they have for this, but I also get to help 
facilitate it because oh, I get yeah. to take them to the card shows oh, yeah. and I get to experience it with them. And, you know, we get to do videos together. You know, we get to open cool boxes together and do different things that, you know, I recognize that we're in a very lucky, fortunate position mm -hmm. where I get to give them experiences that, you know, not every kid is able to get. Sure. But it's so wonderful getting to getting to experience the hobby through their eyes. And I, I really, one of the things I really believe that's so great about sports cards mm -hmm. is the connection that it can create between a parent and a child. It's just such a cool thing. And I think it's, I, I just, I want more parents and kids to be able to experience that. Yeah. One of the things I always pay attention to when fathers are speaking about cards and they have kids is how do they incorporate their family? And you can just tell Jeff loves bringing his kids and even his wife along. His wife influenced a lot of what he's built here by just providing honest feedback. He loves bringing his kids along his journeys. I can relate to that in so many ways. And so I just love hearing Jeff talk about his family in this journey. Well, you mentioned this is where it began. Somebody, it is. Can you show me where yeah, it began? Yeah, it kind of began in the basement downstairs. You want to see kind of the first studio? Yeah, let's go see All it. All right, we're going to go see cool. it. I hope you're enjoying this episode, but we can't wait to show you what's coming next week. What the heck is happening here? It's overwhelming for me because, like I said, when my dad passed away, I helped my sister with the funeral. Let's at least work under the assumption that we're at 3000 bucks and that we want to do whatever we can to pay him more than that. If they don't take it, we'll have to figure something out. If they're not here, that's, that's just a little frustrating for us because... That was a big part of us coming. Back to the show. So is this the wall where it all started? Yeah, actually it is. Yeah, the very, the <laughs> very first, familiar. this was the background. There's just a bookshelf in my house and I put like a little desk out here and sat at the desk and pointed an iPad camera back at, you know, There's back right at here. Huh? That was right here. This is it. This Hello. Is Yes, but the first the first videos I ever did, if you go back and watch them, I literally open the video, I say, hello, sports card investors. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Sports Card Investor. Welcome to the show. And then my wife watches the first few videos and she's like, this is the most boring thing I've ever seen. She's like, you need to open up the video with energy and excitement. Okay, well, I've started my first few videos by saying, Hello, sports card investors. So maybe the next one, I'll go, hello, sports card investors. That's all it was. And my wife was like, yeah, that's better. I'm like, okay. And then that was it. <laughs> so I've done it ever since. That's a good wife. I've done it ever She's since. She's like, here's your missing, yeah. your missing component. Yeah. I feel blessed sometimes to hear the vulnerability of certain characters. And this is Jeff being vulnerable. He's telling us the side of the story that people don't see on camera. So yeah, it started here. Then I kind of transitioned over here. Show you this room. Oh boy, this is cool back here. So this <laughs> yeah. is the new station, huh? Yeah, this is, uh, I, I know it's actually, people think it's bigger than it actually is. Right? It's actually kind of a small area, but this was then the second set for Sports Card Investor. I moved into my own little room down here. This is actually like a big storage room that I just turned into a little studio. I don't use it as much anymore because now we've got an actual real studio down the street for my whole team. Um, but I still left it set up and I've still got a lot of my PC stuff over here. PC, I see Tebow written in all these boxes. Oh, there's, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of Tebow. So you're and, and Gator, Tebow Gator cards. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I am maybe, maybe the biggest Tebow collector in the world. What? I don't know, but I've got, I got just a ton of cards that I love. Like this is his uh, gold refractor from Topps Chrome, that's a Pop 1 PSA 10, the only oh. the only PSA 10 gold refractor in existence. That's his one of one Kaboom, the green Kaboom. One of one, that's his only Kaboom ever. And then of course I had to get the rainbow, so that's the gold out of 10. <laughs> PSA 10, I think that's a Pop 1. Um, and I've got just some really cool ones. Like he had a, he had a Flare Showcase Legacy Row Zero. Most people don't know he had that card. I love this because he's kneeling and praying, right? Uh -huh. that, that encompasses Tebow uh -huh. so well. He's got a jambalaya. Most people don't know he had a jambalaya. Isn't that cool? He had, um, see if I have him in here, he had precious metal gems cards too. I think I've got those in, yeah, here, check these out. Check out the precious metal gems cards. Aren't those neat? 
I love when people are passionate about players. He obviously is passionate because he's a Florida Gators fan, but Tim Tebow and seeing these cards, it just sparks more interest in pursuing my own PC guy, Michael Porter Jr. and Bobby Witt, all those guys, but I love the Tebow stuff. That's a Emmett Smith, Tim Tebow dual auto card. That's oh, a yeah. National Treasures RPA from when he played baseball. Yeah, I've got all kinds of goodies in here. Do you defer to stuff in his Gators uniform? Like, do you yeah, I prefer that. Okay. Yeah, for all of the Gators, I mean, I've got, I, I've got boxes and boxes of, <laughs> of you know, Gators cards, and I prefer, um, I prefer the the cards in the actual Florida Gator uniforms. Tim, if you're watching this, let's talk. Let's go surprise Jeff at the grand opening of his car store. Let's go do this together. Well, this is incredible, man. So yeah. You so you're obviously a super collector of Tebow. Super collector of Tebow for sure. Yeah, that's he's my main PC guy. Um, some of the you know some of the like Trey Young. I get a lot of Trey Young stuff. Some yeah. of the Atlanta Hawks and that kind of stuff as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you have some more cards upstairs. This is a sweet yes. spot, by the way. Yeah, we got to go upstairs. I got to show you the rest of my collection. We can take one of these boxes. <laughs> They're too expensive. <laughs> you can't rip them. You can't rip them. Sometimes you see metrics, you see numbers, you see subscriber counts, and you think, okay, this guy was super lucky. But you see right now in Jeff's house, just the transition from the old studio to the next, to the next, and the stories that he's telling, mad respect for Jeff's grind to get where he's gotten. These are some of my pride and joys. Oh, so I brought, out, I brought out some cases that you know I wanted to show you. So a couple things I got really into recently um, that I, I love collecting. First is on-card autos, both vintage and, and some slightly more modern stuff. I love the idea that, you know, the player held the card, they autographed it. And I know this was sacrilegious for so long and that's why a lot of these older on-card autos are so rare. Mm. But I love, I love the Jordan stuff. That's his um, 84 star, but it's hard to get a Jordan with an autograph grade of a 10. Um, and that's a beautiful copy. That's the sticker from 86 Fleer, really strong autograph on that. This is the highest graded version of this card ever autographed by Jordan. That's one of my favorite cards, his 88 Fleer all-star team, that just iconic slam dunk pose. And that's the highest ever autograph by him graded, you know, grade wise. And I've got a lot of his autograph cards throughout the year. I've actually got his 86 Fleer in there, which I'll show you in a minute. This Muhammad Ali, what an incredible vintage autograph. Only three of those have ever been authenticated as autographed by PSA. And I picked up older ones like Elgin Baylor, like that's cool, Gail Sayers, right? You've got the, you know, Bird, Dr. J, Magic Johnson, autograph rate of 10, autographed by all three of them. Messi and Ronaldo, that's a cool one, isn't it? Uh, on card yeah. autographs of Messi and Ronaldo on that iconic 2014, you know, Panini World Cup card. You know, oh. fun stuff. Dr. J and how about Ken Griffey Jr.'s iconic upper deck 1010? That's on. Isn't that crazy? That's a thick inky sign. It there. is. I know. A 1010 Barry Sanders and Bo Jackson 1010. I love it. And another part of my collection I really love is Dream Team stuff. Oh. So the 1992 Dream Team, I think, was the greatest sports team ever assembled yeah you know the impact that it had on the global growth of basketball and of course this was prime time for me when i was growing up i love this set i picked this set up in the national a couple of years ago stop the whole it's the entire it. set autographed by every member of the 1992 dream team it's a beautiful beautiful set and look how strong the autographs are i mean they're beautiful autographs this is our era of cards, right? This is our this era is of cards. This what you and I open packs on. I've also got all the coaches, look. Daily. <laughs> I mean, look, we've even got the coaches. Isn't that cool? Clyde Drexler, which was kind of the bonus card in there too. Are you serious? These Dream Team cards, like nostalgia number one, but seeing them all autographed and graded, those are awesome, awesome cards. Photo matched. This is the first uniform from the first game the Dream Team ever played together. No This way. is his game used uniform. It smells like <laughs> it smells like a game used like uniform. A That's a game used uniform, photo match to the very first game the Dream Team ever played together. I mean, this is one of my favorite pieces that I own. That is Michael Jordan's pass to get into the 1992 Barcelona Olympic Games. What? He wore this exact pass around his neck the entire time he was in Barcelona, going in and out of every single stadium for the entire Dream Team run in Barcelona. How did you Isn't get that this? Isn't that nuts? That's insane. It, it came up at auction um, a year or two ago, and it was a team secretary that had this and 
uh, all kinds of paperwork and everything like that, um, you know, from it. They, they, they had, it came with like all of this original paperwork where all the players were being registered, um, you know, to participate in the games and all that kind of stuff. As I find unique Dream Team items, um, you know, I, I, I try to pick them up. That's really cool. What yeah. do you think that's worth? I don't know. Now that it's authenticated and also I picked it up before there was, you know, kind of more recent interest in a lot of the Dream Team stuff before like Golden did their auction with the Dream okay. Team jerseys and everything. I I would guess this would sell for I think it would sell for at least fifty thousand dollars today. That would be Whoa. my that would be my guess. I also had to pick this one up, two thousand eight LeBron <laughs> Olympics. Isn't that cool? That's the that's the two thousand eight LeBron one. All right, I got to show you though, since you know I'm into the Dream Team era stuff. Well, a lot of those guys, their first cards were 1986 Fleer. Mm -hmm. That was their first basketball cards for a lot of those Dream Team guys. Uh oh. This is the complete 1986 Fleer set. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Auto grades. And in most cases, the auto grades are 10. The entire set is autographed. Every single card is autographed. Isn't that crazy? Oh my goodness, are you serious? Now that, that is impressive. Oh, Look at that Jordan, at isn't that, that nuts? Jordan, man. Did All you the stickers. individually buy these? No, I bought, no, I bought them off a collector who had done, he had done the hard work and assembled the, assembled the set. So I, I, uh, I benefited from his hard work, but when I saw it, I was like, man, I, that is just the coolest thing that I've seen. Like Dr. J, you know, just all of these and they're beautiful autographs. It's such a neat set. Man, that, Definitely that my pride and joy. Spectacular. Yeah. Here's the best part. You know, the checklist card. Okay. Yeah. Got the checklist autograph by David Stern, <laughs> who was the commissioner in the league touch. at the time. Also have the checklist autograph by the logo, Jerry West. I was, isn't that cool? One of the things that's changed about my collecting strategy since I got back into this, mm -hmm. you know, five or six years ago, I now really love to collect items that have a story behind them. Mm -hmm. They have uniqueness and they have story. I veered away from collecting, you know, more everyday type cards for my PC. Like even like a RPA number to 99 of like a, you know, great, current NFL or NBA player. That's a cool card. It's a wonderful card, but there's 98 others of them and it doesn't really have a story. It's just it's just a cool card of a current mm. everyday player. Where stuff like this, this has a story. This has history. This has the ability to have something that people have never seen before. Yeah. And then you can tell the story about it and it's, it, you know, people's eyes kind of light up. Yeah, it's interesting too to me, like th this is the junk wax era. I know. And you've you've turned junk wax yeah, in, into something so incredibly cool. Yeah. That something really special. Yeah, you just you kinda man, I just that, that sparks a lot of memories for me. So yeah. these are like three of my favorite Kobe cards. I love the ninety-six finest and the ninety-six star date two thousand because mm -hmm. they almost they both have kind of almost an angelic, heavenly yeah. you know, look to them. Mm -hmm. And so I like it for that reason. And then, you know, I love this one, the 2008 Topps Chrome, Chrome. Chrome. That's the gold refractor where it's him and LeBron together. So yeah. that's, if I'm going to, you know, now that cards like this that I'm going to hold on to, I, I try to find cards that have some, you know, kind of specialness to the story of the card itself. I would imagine this gold refractor has got a very low PSA 10 pop. It, I think it's probably less six. Than, okay. I think it's like six or something like that. Man. Yeah, it's a, that's a tough one to get. This one also, the Shaq Jambalaya. Ooh. You know, if you if you're gonna own a Shaq card, like what is the what is that's got to be one of the best ones to own. Like him, it, it's the Jambalaya, right? And so, like, to me, that's just such a great Shaq card to own. And the PSA 10, that one I think is a pop of around five or so. So it was like four <laughs> or five of that card in a PSA 10. Well, these were just so hard to find. Mm -hmm. First off, yeah, I mean, this is the highest graded PSA. Kobe Bryant 2012 Prism, first year of Prism autograph ever. Um, and that's when they, that year that it was actually non card, which is pretty cool. You know, so I mean, it's like stuff like that is, is, is uh, stuff that I really like that I think is pretty special. This one immaculate card from 2015 is the only card that ever, that Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson ever dual autoed. 
Yeah, that's Steph Curry's. That's his gold. I didn't even realize there was glass. a gold stained glass. There is a gold stained glass, yeah. So not numbered. They're not numbered, but they were short prints versus yeah. the regular stained glass. I think that's I think that's Jackson, pretty neat. if you're watching, that's a all the sons of Steph Curry yeah. collector. Okay, so you got the finite, black finite Desmond Ritter. I do. So would that's, you have got this without being in Atlanta? No, I would not have gotten okay. that without being in Atlanta. No. But I, I I like Desmond Ritter. I took a lot of crap when I bought that card this summer because people were like, <laughs> he's not going to be that great. His value is going to go down. You overpaid for it. And the value's gone down for sure since I bought it over the <laughs> summer, you know. But I actually, I think the Falcons are really committed to him. Yeah. Of course, who knows? I could be completely wrong. But I think the Falcons are committed to him. He's been getting better. Yeah. I actually still really like Desmond Ritter. But he's my hometown guy. So it's like, you know, a guy like Desmond Ritter and a guy like, you know, I've got, I've got you know, Trey Young, right? Like, I'm going to... I'm going to get their cards. I'm going to get yeah. the cards of the best guys from my local team as well. So that's, you know, I, the, that's that's why I have the Desmond Ritter, and uh, I have high hopes for him. So we'll see. We got to show the 52 mantle. Yeah, I mean, it's just sitting there staring at us. It's only an SGC three, but the centering on the front of it is really good. Um, you don't see, you know, a lot of times when you get the lower grades, the centering on it's really off, and I think that's a really nice centering, really beautiful copy of that card. Goodness gracious. Man. And then I like LeBron. I've got the, I've got, I'm trying to build out the complete refractor set of LeBron. So starting with 2003, that's his Topps Chrome base, but that's the black label 10. How many of those? Less than five. Um, no, I think there's like 11 there's maybe. 11 yeah, maybe 11. Like that's the refractor in a PSA 10. And then you've got the X fractor, which is numbered to 220 in a PSA 10. You've got the black refractor, that one's numbered at 500 in a PSA 10. And these are very low population as well. And then the gold refractor in a nine. So that's number 50. So that's the rainbow from 2003 Topps Chrome. Would this be a trade up, sell up type mm -hmm. thing from nine to 10 if mm -hmm. you're doing okay. 100%. So same philosophy as a lot of If I saw a 10 come up for auction, I would, I would definitely make a run at it. I would definitely make a run at it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we'll see what it goes for, you know, but I would definitely make a run at it for sure. And then in that case, I would, I would sell my nine and, yeah. and take the 10, but I, that I need that to complete out my set yeah. of perfect scored LeBrons from his rookie year. Right. <laughs> this is hilarious. I like how he casually brings out LeBron James. He goes refractor, X fractor, black gold. Oh, and just a pristine black label Chrome. I mean, incredible LeBron James cards right here. These are my two favorite late 90s inserts. Yeah. These, these ones are. I love the platinum portraits and I love the molten metal fusions. Mm -hmm. And um, I, think, I, I think these look great with Jordan. I love, the, I love how the red of his jersey pops on that silver background. I think yeah. they're both cool. They're both really hard to pull, but 97, 98, these were really hard mm -hmm. inserts to get. I think they're just really so neat, cool. innovative card designs, yeah. These were kind of cutting edge in the day. I can imagine. I can imagine, yeah. I mean, I, they'd still, frankly, be cutting edge today. Oh, yeah, very true. You know? This is stuff you don't even think about selling. This is stuff that goes right. stays in your family, right? Yes. A lot of this stuff is stuff that I'm just keeping locked away and have, have zero interest in selling a lot of it. So, That's amazing. Yeah. Card shops opening. Yeah, Cards HQ. We're opening it in January. Any of this going to be featured in the shop? Not, not routinely. <laughs> Cards HQ is not going to be a shop that sells a whole lot of, you know, really high-end expensive cards. Okay. We are trying to build the ultimate store for the everyday collector, right? We want a very collector-friendly store. We want a store that's very kid-friendly, very family-friendly, very friendly to new people getting into collecting, and very friendly to people at every budget level. That's awesome. We haven't talked about this, but could, yeah, where, where are you at in the build out of the shop? Can we go see it? Yeah, you wanna go see the shop? They're putting, yeah. they're just starting, they're just, they've just started the process, but they're starting to put up walls right now. So we could, I okay. can go walk you through it and give you a sense of what it's gonna be like. ETA is January, is that when you're trying to open? Trying to open January 26th, fingers crossed. Let's we'll see if construction remains on schedule, but that's the goal. Let's go see it. All right, let's cool, let's do it. You say go around this way? Yeah, go around that way. Okay. Literally has taken us a year to get to the point where we even have construction underway and we can open up now in a few months. Yeah. It's a big effort because you've got to, you know, you got to find your location, which takes some, which takes a while. And we were very picky. We did not want to settle. We kept looking and kept looking okay. until we found the absolute ideal spot. So how many employees are you going to have day one, you think? 25 to 30. My Just for the shop. Yeah, it's a lot of people to hire. 
We're gonna go right here. Uh, that's a substantial force. It's a big force, but you know, yeah. we're gonna be open seven days a week and we're gonna be live streaming. This is the crazy thing we're doing. We're live streaming 24 hours a day from the card shop. We're gonna be live 24 hours a day. One of the big things for me with a shop, like people, you know, people look at opening up a giant 14,000 square foot card shop and they're like, wow, that's putting a lot of investment into retail in this time when retail is, you know, not as popular as it used to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think what people understand is what I'm actually doing is building the world's biggest and greatest live streaming sports card studio that happens to have a card shop as it's set. But what do you think people from out of the state look at Cards HQ and say, this is a destination I have to go to? What do you think it is? I, it? I hope they do. I hope they do. Obviously, our goal is to draw on people from all over the US the same way that, or maybe even all over the world, the same way that Burbank does. Yeah. You know, Burbank Sports Cards out in California does that. Um, our focus is on on creating a store environment where collectors want to come in and spend the afternoon or spend the day. It's not going to be come in and buy a box and get out. It's going to be come in, buy a box, bring your own cards with you, sit down in our lounge, trade your cards with other customers in the store, mm -hmm. open your box in our featured card breaking area that's set up for anybody to open up their own boxes and live stream, watch sports, on our three 90 inch TVs in our customer lounge and enjoy yourself and enjoy cards and enjoy being part of an experience for the day. So where is it gonna be here? Where, where will us, where will the sign be? So it's gonna be right there. Bottom floor the bottom floor? Bottom floor on the left. Yeah, this is a great plaza. So that's a main event, big video game center. This place is crawling with kids on the weekend, just crawling oh, with insane. kids. That's actually the second busiest movie theater in the state of Georgia. So you got, you got the plazas packed at night, on the weekends, lots of families, lots of kids, lot, you know, and so now we just gotta say, hey, come on over here. And we got all the sports cards and Pokemon you could possibly want right here at Cards HQ. So every movie, pre-screen, yes. you're gonna have an ad. Yeah. Ticket yeah. stubs, yeah. bring it in for We're gonna have to do all that off. stuff. We're gonna have to do all that stuff. Oh. It's literally right here. Brilliant. Yeah, look at this, huh? We need hats. Gotta get a hard hat on. Oh my goodness, man. Welcome to Cards HQ, Ty. Look at this, huh? How much square footage am I looking at right here? So the entire store is 14,000 square feet. The, okay. the retail floor, which is what you're looking at now, I think is about 9,000 square feet. And then nine or 10,000. And then the, you know, then we've got our, you know, uh, support team, sports card investor studio, um, back office, shipping, warehouse, et cetera you know, which totals out to the 14,000. So it's gonna be obviously a huge card shop. I don't even know the vision. I've watched some of your stuff kind of painting the picture. What are, what are we gonna see in So the you're future? walking in here, this entire, this entire front section of the store is actually gonna be trading card games. So we cool. decided uh, a lot of Pokemon and we decided that we position, so that you're gonna see in this area, that wall is all gonna be Pokemon wax, a huge wall of Pokemon wax. Okay. And then this will all be showcases of Pokemon singles cards. And the reason why we're doing Pokemon at the front is because a lot of people know Sports Card Investor, Cards HQ, a lot of people know we're gonna have sports cards. But we also want Atlanta to find out that we're gonna have a huge selection of trading card games as well. And then as you weave into the store, then you really get into this kind of sea of showcases. And then, you know, we've got showcases kind of all this direction. Customer lounge over there, which is gonna be super cool. Um, big TVs, great place to watch the games at all times. And then our featured breaking arena, which is gonna be such a cool experience for people to be able to come in, buy a box of cards, and then they're gonna be able to sit down at a table that looks and feels like the final table at the World Series of Poker with dramatic lighting. And the entire table is live streaming all the time. So they can sit down and they can essentially kind of be their own breaker, open their own box. It's all live for people to watch. And there's bleachers. So people in the store can sit in the bleachers and see what people are opening. And then the table has integrated card cams. So as they're opening the box, behind them there's a big TV showing what cards they're opening. So they can really feel like they're their own breaker 
and it's available to anybody who walks in the store. So even somebody who buys a $20 blaster box can sit there and have the experience of being a breaker with people watching both in store and online. We think it's going to be a really that fun, such a cool, a that, fun attraction. That's a draw. Yeah, that's I think that will be a like, draw. You don't want to go home and open your box. Yes. You want to go to Cars, Cars HQ, HQ to open it. Open it there. That's what that's what we're hoping. I love it. That's a that's great what idea. We're hoping. Yeah. You can tell like the way Jeff and the team are thinking about this. They want to incorporate all these facets of the hobby that have been very disconnected. So I love his vision, the way he's thinking about bringing kids and breaking together, uh, bringing like the community aspect of opening cards. This is going to be game changing in the sports card space. In all the different showcases we're going to have throughout this whole show floor, if you were to take every single card out of all of the showcases, this doesn't even include value boxes, just the showcases, and you were to line them all up in a line across a football field, it would, it would be a row, a continuous row of 14 football fields worth of cards. That's how many cards we will have on display in our showcases at all times. First impressions, that shop is ginormous. I mean, he said 14,000 feet, but then you see it and you realize that's only two thirds of it. Mind blowing how large that place is. These are all breaking and live streaming studios. The thing that's really unique about it is that these are all open. So this Ooh. is open. So when you're in the store, you're gonna be able to walk down this row and you're gonna be able to just kind of walk up here and you're gonna be able to see the breaker right there doing a live <laughs> break and just kind of see what they're breaking. So this is, we're calling, this is like breaker's row right here. You know, you can literally go from breaker station to breaker station and watch what people are breaking or live selling. I think it's gonna be a neat, a neat thing for sure. And then this over here, this is our, this is our sports card investor studio. The desk will be here and the cameras will be pointing here and I'll be here doing the top five and then customers that are in the store can watch because this will just be a giant glass wall. This is our back office area. So our, our sports card investor team will work out of here. So yeah, it's gonna I, be a lot I'm of fun. I'm so impressed. Who else has influenced you? and kind of the design and the vision of the shop. Yeah, Burbank Sports Cards has been a huge influence. Um, AA Mint Sports Cards down in Cooper Florida. City, Florida, South yeah. Florida. Um, Mark, the owner of that store, super sharp. He's super given techie, us- Super right? Yeah, Everything very tech techie oriented. too. So he's given us a lot of really good advice. Um, I like what they're doing. Um, Paradise Card Breaks out in Las Vegas, they were the ones who really convinced me to not do breaking off in a corner, but to actually bring it into the store because they they okay. configured their store so breaking was taking place close to where all the customers were and customers could watch. And so when I went in their store and saw that, I was like, oh, that's different. And he's like, you gotta do this. This is like, you know, the better, the better way to do it because yeah. you get the excitement and everything. And I said, okay, I wanna model that. And also this summer, I went to Japan okay. and I toured the card shops in Japan, both sports card shops, which Mint there is the big brand of sports card shops in Japan. Okay. And then they also have a lot of trading card game shops in Japan as well. And in Japan, I saw that all of the cards are displayed upright. Mm -hmm. They don't have these showcases that we have in the US where you're looking down to see cards down here. Their displays are all this way. So all the cards are on rows behind glass and you can look straight at them. Hmm. It's such a better customer experience. Yeah, insane, insane. Okay, so AA Mint, Paradise, Burbank. Yeah, and the card shops in Japan. Car shops and so many Japan. others. I, I, I've been lucky to be able to visit card shops all over the country. Yeah. And there's so many good card shops oh. and card shop owners and operators. And so I've learned a, a little from a ton of different card shop and card shop owners. And it looks pretty cool, man. This is, Thank you. Uh, thanks for giving us a sneak peek. Yeah, for sure. Excited to have you for the grand opening. Okay. You gotta come right. back down. All right, all right, that's fair. For sure. Thank you yeah, so much, Yeah, it's been man. great showing it to you. What a pleasure. Thank you, where are you off to next? So we're going to Nebo, North Carolina. Have you heard of it? No. <laughs> Neither what's, had we. What's a Nebo, a collection? We're going to see a collection. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's four hours away or I would have said, Jeff, come with me. Okay. But maybe we load a U-Haul up and we save it to bring back to the shop. Hey, we need cards. So if you find good ones, let me know. We're buying. Heck yeah. What about you? What's what's in store for you? Probably go, uh, go back to work, do a little videos this afternoon and then enjoy the weekend with the kids. Brilliant. Yeah, All good right, to see brother. you, Ty. Good Thanks, man. You, good luck All with right. everything. Yeah, you too. Yeah. The time with Jeff was, was super good. You know, a lot of times you see someone on camera and you see his personality, 
and you wonder what's really behind the camera. Uh, and I've had conversations with him in the past and gotten to know him, but seeing him in his element, bringing out a card, you know, the cards that he loved and the way he collects and talking about his family uh, was really good. It was really good to, to see that side of him. I think we're gonna look back 10, 15, 20 years from now and realize the type of impact that Jeff Wilson and his platform had in growing the hobby. Um, you know, he came in at a time where there was a lot of momentum in the hobby, and obviously he's still very lively. He is one of the main voices in the hobby. His positive influence in his channel and the awareness he brought to sports cards is a massive deal in the growth of this hobby. And so there's a lot that we have, we have to be thankful for, for his investment and time and resources into sports cards. So that's pretty cool to see.